Our next guest for episode three is Mark Wilkinson. He's come from being an international house music DJ and record producer, having been a resident DJ for the world famous Ministry of Sound in London, playing music in 65 different countries across the world and achieving a UK top 10 hits to really difficult situations and scenarios that he's had to overcome. He has overcome them thankfully and now he's a multiple business owner, coach, motivational speaker and author and I really can't wait to chat further with him about his journey to date. So here he is. I've heard people say that you only live once. I disagree. I think you die once, but you live every single day. Live in the present moment. It's the best place to be. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Wilkinson. Uh, I am the author of Life Remixed. Uh, for 20 years, I was an international house music DJ traveling all over the globe. 65 countries playing house music wherever you can imagine, all four corners of the planet. Uh, it was a great time. Sex, drugs and house music hilarious moments all kinds of challenges uh it was uh it was a young man's dream in many ways until it wasn't i'm glad to say that i've remixed my own life uh over the course of the last 12 years or so from that incurable disease and an ensuing bankruptcy uh it was tough times but i had to go through them in every crisis there is an opportunity life remix is a bit about my story and then a lot about strategies that i've used that i know can help you because they helped me so keep in touch with us. There's more videos coming. Uh, we're here to serve. We're here to help. Um, talk soon. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode three of the Sheer Business Inspiration podcast and blog. I'm really excited to have Mark Wilkinson as our guest today. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hey, Joe. Brilliant. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you. It's nice and sunny out there today. So uh, the sunshine helps, doesn't it's it? It's getting warmer, slowly it's but getting surely. Warmer, it's getting warmer. Buds are growing like, on the trees and everything. Um, for those who might not be aware of your backstory, hmm. can you share a little bit about your journey to date? So I know it's a, an exciting one. So <laughs> it's, it's not dull, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was um, resident DJ at Ministry of Sound when I was 25. Uh, I also had a record in the UK top 10 when I did a remix of Lou Reed and David Bowie um, back in 2004, Satellite of Love. Um, so I did that remix. And um, yeah, I've, I've traveled all over the globe. I've DJed in 65 countries. I've played music to thousands, um, hundreds of thousands probably in my career. Um, just about every sort of continent. Uh, I just had the travel bug, found music. But if I trace it all the way back, it was, you know, the first time I heard Elvis and the Beatles on my mum's stereo, where I was just like, what is this? You know, and I had this amazing affinity and, and feeling and goosebumps with music. And that the was big, the starting point. The big uplifting tunes, you know, all the big yeah. melodies and that. I was like, this is amazing. I love it. And uh, and then you know, I was like six then. And then um, next thing you know, I'm in my teens. I'm buying all the 80s soul music. And, and then 1988, I'm 18 years of age standing in the middle of nightclub dance floors in London and the surrounding areas, just as Acid House kicks off and the whole thing just is like, woof. A big mushroom, quite, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was like, I mean, if you think about, I don't know, the, the way it goes sort of with music, Northern Soul, and it was punk, you know, um, New Romantics, whatever, and there was Acid House and, and I was 18 at that perfect moment and, and I just got swept up in this kind of wonderful um, youth, movement of people that just loved music um but some of my addictions got the better of me shall we say okay well thank you for that overview i mean i'm i'm a, a huge lover of music as well and i really love the way that music transforms you know you you could be thinking about something else and then a, a, a song plays and it transports you to that time and that place and you know i can't wait for live events and live music to to be out there and for people to enjoy in you know in person again um 
as much as I love listening to music by myself, I much prefer to be in, in a live events environment. So how has the well, pandemic, I, go on, sorry. I was going to say music is the sound of emotions. Yes, it Music is. is the sound of emotions. And the other thing I would say about what you just shared there was that it's about the energy of everyone together. Yes. And that's what's missing at the moment. You know, yeah. they've separated us all. And, it, you know, th that's the bit that's missing. And you, me, you know, we, we all can't wait for that to come oh, back. Oh, no, can't wait. Absolutely. How has the pandemic affected you in the way that you work, Mark? Um, well, it's quite interesting, actually, because I've been um, a business and wealth coach uh, with a guy called Kevin Green here in the UK for um, probably about three years now. And most of the coaching we were doing was using Zoom. Um, it was before everyone else heard of Zoom, to be honest. He said Zoom to people and they were like, Skype? And you're like, no, no, <laughs> Zoom. Um, it's it's a lower bandwidth and it works better and it travels all over the world. And I've got clients in Australia, Japan, all over Europe, some in the States. I mean, we've got people everywhere. Um, and, um, and I've been doing that for a while. And so actually, you know, the pandemic didn't change that much for me. I mean, I did have, I've got multiple businesses and multiple sources of income and, um, you know, one of them was airports and clearly airports is not going well at the moment. And the other one would be events. So we do event and event safety and event management. Yeah. And clearly that's not doing well at the moment. So yeah. those things obviously um, struggled, um, but other areas thrive, that are thriving. So, you know, the, con the construction part of our business is, is flying because right. construction has never stopped. Yeah. Um, the coaching part of our business is thriving because- I was more... going to say more people want to be coached, don't <laughs> more, they? More and... and more people want to be coached because, yeah. I mean, I wrote Life Remixed. I, I've written it in the last couple of years, but I had the idea for it like 10 years ago mm -hmm. or more. And um, I, I wrote it about recovering from a crisis. That was my personal crisis of yes. incurable disease and bankruptcy that took me down in my thirties. Um, so I wrote it, I was like, I'm gonna recover from this crisis and I'm gonna share how I've done it. And I'm gonna use these strategies that I've learned from The Secret and Bob Proctor and Marcy Scheimer and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna write a book about it. If, the other thing in my mind was, if it works, if it works, I'm going to write a book about it because part of my back of my mind was going, it probably won't work. So why that's not? the thing. It's a belief system as well, isn't it? Exactly right. And I yeah. had to, you know, I had to choose to believe. And I didn't have any special reason to choose to believe apart from I looked at other successful people and thought, well, they're doing all right. So, you know, I'll just What's copy their them. their secret sauce? That's what you were thinking. <laughs> I'll just copy them and see what happens, right? Yeah. And they all told me the same messages from all these great books and Audio, audio books and audio, but it was all in a different way because every person's unique but yes. the messages were very similar and I was like well I'm just going to follow what you're telling me to do because why not and um and then I had this idea I, I went I went from unable to walk and I ran a marathon and I actually wow, ran, four, I ran four marathons in the end um and in the last um couple of years I've become financially free so I was bankrupt at the end of my 30s as well so if I go from unable to walk to running marathons and then bankrupt to financially free it actually it does work then, doesn't it's it? It's a good story and it works, yes. So tell us a bit more about that challenging time. And obviously, you know, it, I appreciate, you know, it's a troublesome time, but equally you, you've totally turned it all around for yourself. So t tell us a bit more about that, that period. So it's quite a, a therapeutic thing to do to write a book. Hang on, show you. It's quite a life remix. It's quite a therapeutic thing to do to write a book because you can just sort of put it all out there and go, okay here but it's not just about me if it was just about me then it would be i'd be a celebrity and it'd be an autobiography and it's not that at all it's literally like look here's some stuff that happened um and then this is how bad it got yes. and then this is all the things i did to fix it yeah. um and you know it's a redemption story if you like but you know going back to the chapter one and the sort of first thing that happened that really got me to listen to my body uh, was the day that i collapsed in my flat in london um and i had a physical collapse my leg gave way um, and then long story short, obviously it's all in the book, but for the following 18 months were ensuing agony as my body got worse and worse and worse. And what I mean by that was the joints, they, they felt like they froze. Like I couldn't sit, I couldn't move. You know, if I sat in a position for very long, I got, kind of got stuck there. Um, and it was, and then it was only if I just started to get moving, that I could start to move again. And it, I was hammering painkillers like they were going out of fashion. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a really dark time. I had suicidal thoughts. I was like, this is not worth living. I'm in so much physical agony. Yeah. But what is the point of this? I was 33 and I was like, I might as well just go and sling myself off a building here. 
Um, and I, I say this slightly lightheartedly, uh, of course, um, I've always been scared of heights, so I never fancied doing it, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Um, but my point is, is that thankfully I didn't do that. And uh, I, I decided to try and understand a bit more about myself. And that was when one of my early mentors gave me a DVD, as it was at the time of The Secret. And he said, watch this. And I said, mm, okay, whatever. So I watched it and I watched it once. I tried to give it back. He said, watch it again. I did. I tried to give it back. He said, go and watch it a hundred times, Mark. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding? A like, hundred times to watch a film, you're off your nut. And, uh, and it was kind of like, you know, but he was serious and I could tell he was serious. And he was a guy that I respected because he, he earned my respect in other ways by that time already. So I just went, okay, fine, I'll do it. And I did. And I studied The Secret a hundred times. I, if not more, I could watch it and regurgitate it all to you if you need me to, but probably not. Uh, but the point is, is that, you know, I learned from that. And, and in there, Bob Proctor said about a dis-ease being two words. Yeah. And that was a light bulb moment because I was like, one, why have I never heard this before? No. Why, why am I only just finding this out now yeah. at 34 years of age as it was at the time? But also a doctor, finally, after 18 months of agony, suicidal thoughts, oh, really in a bad way, a doctor finally said, uh, it was a rheumatologist. She said, you've got an incurable disease. I went, have I? But this bloke says it's a disease. Bob Proctor says it's a disease. And you're saying I've got an incurable disease. So what is going on here? And that was the bit. And I just, I was like, right, I've got to study this and I've got to understand this more and more. And thankfully I've done it and I've got into my subconscious and I've created a happy, healthy, wealthy, successful life with relationships and everything else. Yeah. And um, it's, um, it, it's not an accident, Joe. And, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? I think you, you have to take the cues. Like you, you, the things that, that are presented to you are presented to you at the time that they're meant to be. And, you know, but equally for those that aren't aware of the secret, can you share a little bit about that so that they, they understand? Because, I mean, I, I, I do read it and I, and, I, and I am aware of it, but the audience might not be well no absolutely and there's a film on netflix uh, there so is yeah i've seen it yeah. it's a new a new newer well, one isn't it okay so there's a new film that's like a sort of like a like a hollywood kind of film yes there's actually a documentary a 2006 yeah. documentary yeah that was the one that i watched okay um, so i watched the 2006 documentary then i got the uh audible uh audio book by, yes. read by Rhonda Byrne, and then i got the actual book itself um and just started to study and read it i've got it over here behind me and um I just, it would just became more and more clear to me about something called the law of attraction, which is what we yes. think about is yes. basically what we bring about, but there's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. So the, the people complain about the secret and I understand it in some ways because they say, well, ask, believe, receive, and that's it. And it's like, well, no, the bit- It the, isn't, no, it's yeah. Ask, it's yeah. ask, believe, yeah. take some massive action and then receive, right? And yeah. then so, but the point is, is that, you know, the, the concept is good. Yeah. But the bit that's missing is the massive action in there. The other thing I would say is, is, as well is that the law of attraction is kind of like an entry level thing into the law of vibration. And we are all actually all you know, molecular structures in a state of vibration. And it's, it's very, very, very interesting. The more you study this stuff, and for me, the secret was entry level. It was the first thing I needed to hear. Yeah. And I've just gone on and on and on. And, and there's a great quote that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And yes. I've, just, yeah. I've just devoured books for the last... 15 years um and uh, but you know many people read the same books as me and then don't do anything i've read no, no i think you've also got to be ready yourself okay. haven't you you ha you've got to be ready and, and believe yourself because mm. i think you know it's like anything isn't it you know you you might be in the worst possible situation i was going you know and, and this is the, the purpose that you know we created this this podcast and blog was to give people hope and things to look forward to and to physically want to understand that there is light at the end of the tunnel and there is a way out of things. You know, if you're feeling challenged or you're, you know, in trouble, you need to ask for help. Um, but equally, you need to be able to help yourself too. Mm. Um, and I think that's that's it really important to say because you could be in the worst possible situation, but you can get yourself out of it. There, there are ways that you can do that. And you can know, I just read you? Can I read you yeah. something? Of course you can. Yeah, here, yeah. Because right? I haven't read, I haven't read this book yet, but I know, I know, it, I know, I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm looking forward to you reading. Yeah. It. I'm looking forward to your Amazon review as well, Joe. Yeah. Um, 
But Bob Proctor wrote so now Bob Proctor's obviously within the secret. He's a guy that's inspired me for 15 years, continues yeah. to inspire me. But I just want to read this to you because this exactly what this fits in so well with what you just said. Okay. Life remix wouldn't have been possible without Mark Wilkinson making a critical decision at the lowest point of his life. Let's face it, our results are the culmination of the decisions we make or don't make. For anyone looking for hope, this book offers an abundance of it. And with hope, you have options. Yeah, so true. There we are, see? <laughs> see, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? I think you have to, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in what is possible. And then, and then you know, you take the steps to make that happen, don't you? So um, undoubtedly the pandemic has rocked many businesses and individuals to the core um, particularly as we've discussed the music hospitality and events industries um, what's your take on how those industries can you know build their way back up again you know we've got a long road ahead it's not going to be easy smooth I know everyone wants June to be a you know, oh, we're all going to open all the floodgates and everybody's going to party. And, it's all, and you know, I'd, lo I'd love for that to be the case, but I think there will be bumps in the road, but equally, I, I think we can handle them. It's just, right. you know, I don't know what, what your take is on it. I think, I think many people are so excited about the fact that on, after June the 12th, we're all free again. And I, I you know, I, I hope it, it gets to that point. Uh, a lot of people are getting excited about 2021 being the, new, the next summer of love. You know, if you remember, like everyone talks about 88 as the summer of love and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are just so chomping at the bit to be able to get out there. And, and you know, let's hope, let's hope that it works out perfectly. And I, I you know, life is about hope. So let's keep, you know, that positive outlook. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, one of the reasons I wrote this book was because, um, you know, I lived the music career for 20 years. Uh, and I did have multiple sources of income, but I had it in all in music. So I had a record recording studio and I did productions and remixes. And then I ran club nights and I DJ for myself and for other people. And, you know, but the problem was, was that obviously when the internet came out in 2001, two, three, uh, people started downloading, downloading music. And my yeah. income went from 5,000 pounds a remix to 500 pounds a remix to nothing okay. in the space of like a year and a half or two years or whatever it was. And that in itself was pretty like shocking, but I still had the DJ income, the, the you know, the, the Saturday, Friday, Saturday nights income. So I could live off that and still work in the studio during the week and say it was okay. That kind of worked okay until the credit crunch of 2008, nine, when everyone stopped going out. And I detail that in the book as well. And it just went, yeah. boom, when it, that imploded. And I found myself 38 years of age after having an incurable disease, ending up bankrupt and living in my mum's spare room going, what just what happened? Am I gonna do? What, yeah, what's where, just what's where, happening? Where, where did this all yeah, yeah go, where did it all where go, did go wrong? Go, where did it go wrong? Where yeah. Go wrong? And, and so, you know, that whole piece was like um a real um hit to my young ego. My young ego was all about me, 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 aren't I a great DJ? Look at me, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I wasn't really doing a lot of things for the for what I would call now the right reasons. Um and um so, but what I did was I, I just started to study and I started to learn about multiple sources of income, multiple, multiple streams of income that turned into a huge river yeah. of income. And I just got it from lots of different places. So I still do a bit of music and I still get a little bit of income, but probably only 5% where it used to be 100%. Yeah. But my point is now is that I've diversified into, I've got a consultancy, I've got coaching, I've got a book, I've got properties, buy to let properties. I've got, you know, I've got numerous things that I do. Yeah that all bring money to me the 17 hours a day that I'm awake and yes. some, some of them when I'm asleep as well. Right. But yeah. my, point, <laughs> my point is, is that, you know, I've, I've done this over the last 12 years and my mission now is to share that with as many as many people as possible and say, look here, yeah. you know, listen to this and take these actions mm. because if you read think and grow rich, Napoleon Hill says every seven to 10 years, the human race lurches from fear to fear, disaster to disaster. We had 2008, nine, now we've got this one. Yes. And there'll be another one in seven to 10 years. Time. Yes, yeah. And so you've got to, you know, when in the boom time, you've got to, in, you know, ensure yourself to make sure that you can go through the time to of go hardship. again. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and so, also, yeah, they say, that, sorry, <laughs> they, they say that, that from obviously the, 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 the awful situations there are so many opportunities that present themselves so yeah. you know i think that's the other crisis, thing in every crisis there's an opportunity yeah and and you just have to look a bit harder for it sometimes you know and but it's our mind 
everything starts in our mind. If, if I had chosen to do that, you know, jump off the bridge or, or just finish it or whatever, then, then obviously I wouldn't be here to tell this story. But the point is, is that that's how bad it can get yeah. when some, you know, but I'm here to tell everybody and just the evidence to everybody to say, do you know what? It's not the end of it. You know, if you lose everything, it's not the end of it. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if the doctor tells you you've got an incurable disease, it's not the end of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can fix these things as long as you're prepared. You know, I say this a lot in, in coaching to people. I say to them, obviously you've got to take action, but I also say that no matter how you're feeling right now, there is a human being who has experienced it before and written a book about it, <laughs> you know? And I guarantee it, you can find something that will help you, yeah. not just me, any author, you'll find a book and you'll go, this person's already experienced this. What did they do? Yeah. And off you go. Amazing. Well, and, and you mentioned Bob Proctor, which, you know, uh, he's endorsed your book. I mean, he's, he, as you say, he's, he's such a, you know, inspiring individual. Um, and how, how did it feel to get that endorsement for himself? I've seen it and obviously we can share the links to it as well. Um, but that, I mean, that just, that's just amazing, isn't it? I've got goosebumps while you're saying it to me. Yeah. yeah. It just it is amazing. I mean, uh, I've studied with this guy from a distance for a long time, uh, him and Tony Robbins. And uh, I also, uh, as I say, I've worked with Kevin Green here in the UK, who does a lot of sort of similar kind of like property, gold, silver kind of, that's what Kevin does, business and wealth. But yeah. certainly the self-development part of it is something that, that I've really studied with Bob and with, with Tony, but Bob especially, because he was the first person, he, he felt, he even looked a little bit, even looks a little bit like my dad, which is wow, odd. Wow, okay. Right? But I watched this thing, it was almost like my dad died when I was 18. Okay. Um, so, so I didn't really know my dad. You don't really know your parents until you're at least in your 20s, I would say most of the time. Um, and so, uh, my dad passed when I was young, you know, uh, long story is a bit of it in the book, obviously, of course, but obviously, all of a sudden, I'm 33, 34, 35, I'm trying to work out just what on earth is going on in my life. And then there's this kindly older gentleman in the secret who looks a little bit like my dad saying all this amazing stuff. And I'm like, yeah. oh, right, what? Okay, tell me more, <laughs> tell me more. Yes, and, and, yeah. And, and, and I got into it and then, you know, literally we've worked with a publisher in the States and that's how Life Remixed has been released on Hasmark Publishing. Um, and two things happened in the last few weeks that have just like, literally we were on another call. Um, we were chatting away and all of a sudden I got one of the little email, ding, you know, up in the top right hand corner of my screen. And it just said, Bob Proctor endorsement, the one I just read to you. And I was literally in the middle of a meeting and I just, Ooh. I was like, I'm so sorry right okay. now. but. <laughs> I'm just, I'm totally distracted by what's just appeared on the side of the screen. I'm sorry. And I, I literally went and, and said, look, I'll come back to you in five minutes. And I, I read this endorsement. I was like, my goodness, that's incredible. And yeah. then the week before, the week before the release party, um, I got that, you know, two minute endorsement video from Bob yeah. again, landed in my inbox. And um, I just cried. I was crying. Oh, it's just lovely. I mean, I was, and, and, but, it, but it, it's a testament to what, you know what you set out to do and and and, and you're doing it and you're mm. living it and that and that's brilliant Thank what principle the principles that you teach others are there any little nuggets that you could share today for our budding entrepreneurs or mm. people that might, that might have been made redundant and are thinking i don't know where to start or you know just generally anyone that's in a bit of a rut and they don't quite know how to get out of it what what could you share with us today? Well, there's so much, Joe. There's so much. I mean, you know, let's 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 bed in for an hour and a half, and we'll be <laughs> um, I know we could go on for hours. We could. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, I, what I would say is, is that um, on the personal development side, the quickest way to get yourself back into balance, um, which is directly a quote from the uh, the science of getting rich by Wallace Wattles from 120 years ago. Um, he says the entire process of mental adjustment and atonement can be summed up in one word, which is gratitude. Yeah. Now, for me to be able to have that gratitude, I had to go through a couple of things. One was forgiveness for myself and everyone else. Yeah. The other thing was acceptance, like total acceptance of myself and everyone else, mm -hmm. and then start to feel really grateful. So those things, I love them. Forgiveness, acceptance and gratitude. Those three things are my stalwarts, my go to things. And, and, and they've worked for me over a period of time. And like like a muscle. I've just built them and built them and built them. So now I no longer need to practice them because they're in my subconscious and that's yeah. just what I've put into the world. Other things I would say, what, number one, calm down, speed up. 
okay so the calmer you are the more effective you'll be and the quicker things will happen yeah, so true. really keep calm at all times you know, work on your calmness reprogram your subconscious be calm believe in yourself like you said uh, and the other thing i would say is so important is purpose vision and goals yeah i know my purpose my purpose is to bring joy knowledge inspire and create as long as I'm doing those four things, I'm living my life on purpose. Yeah. The next thing I would yeah. say is we think in pictures. So if I asked you or any of the audience to think about your front door, you would think about it. Yeah. And what color is it? Okay. What color is your front it's door? It's green. It's green. And yeah. you can picture it, can't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so crystal clear. Yeah. I've just, yeah. I've just proved as soon to you. As you said it. We think in pictures. So we need to visualize our perfect. The life I live today is the life I visualized when I was in my mum's spare little box room, yes. listening to Bob Proctor with this visualization thing going on. It's the life that I live today because I've visualized it consistently for the last 10, 12 years. Yeah. And now here we are. And the other thing is goals, you know, goal setting, you know, every workshop will tell you goal setting, but they won't always explain to you why. Mm -hmm. And goals, goal setting is the small steps that get you to your vision. Um, and you can break those down. I break them down. I start at 10 years and then I go you know, five years, three years, one year, and then three months. And every three months, every 90 days, you can make a huge shift in your life if you set yourself 90 day goals. 90 yeah. days is a, is a nice little chunk of time. But the, those things, when you start to see those things start to happen, so if you say, right, in 90 days time, I'm going to have this qualification or in 90 days time, I'm going to have another buy to let property or in 90, whatever it's going to be, yeah. 90 days time, I'll have a fantastic coaching program and it'll be out into the world. As long as you take those steps, as soon as you start to see them happen, you go, well, I thought about that. And there it is. Yeah. And then it proves it to you. And then you can take yeah. that into, you know, the last thing I was saying is that Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, incredible book. He says the definition of a genius is someone who can like an aircraft sort of thing can take off and actually look far into the distance without all the little hubbub of he said, she said, and all the little noise that human beings make that can knock you off track, but can actually see far into the distance. Like I, I can see the rest of my life. I know what the rest of my life is going to be like. I'll be on this planet for 30, 40, 50 years more, you know, hopefully. And uh, the point is, is that I can visualize that and I know what it's going to be like. And, yeah. and everyone's got this power. I'm not, it's not some incredible thing I've just come up with. We've all got this power. We just don't, all we've just not trained our brains to do it yet yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm with you i'm with you and, and those are those i mean that's really great valuable um insights there so thank, thank you and um, who who inspires you yeah. um most of the people i just mentioned to be fair marcy shymoff is an incredible woman i just interviewed her the other day on my youtube channel what a powerhouse she is so yeah marcy shymoff bob proctor tony robbins um uh, but one of the things I would say, and it sounds a bit, it sounds a bit sort of, you know, well, no, I would say Kevin Green as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Lewis Senior, who runs a company called eColors, Danny Ramlin. I get inspiration from so many sources. Yeah. But the other thing that I do, and I, I hope this comes across in the way it's meant, because I want it for other people, really, yeah. is that I inspire myself. Yeah. You know, I, I literally, I get up out of bed every day. I feel grateful. I do a bit of exercise. I drink some water. Uh, you know, I get myself going. I live my life on purpose. Yeah. I do all things throughout the day to bring that value, you know, look, you know, look out for people, you know, add increase to other people's lives. Yeah. Um, and money comes back to me and I live a happy life. I relax in the evening with my wife. And so to me, that's the other thing we spoke about goals, just, just going back slightly as well. The thing about goals is that it's so important to understand that power. And for me, I, when I was in a, a difficult situation in a difficult job that I wasn't particularly loving, um, I actually decided to write down my perfect day. Okay. What does my perfect day feel like? And I just described it to you, to be honest, is get up in the morning, do all the things I said, have live a great day and go to sleep in the evening. And with the power of visualization and the power of that goal of this is my perfect day and I must be living my perfect day shortly because I'm not happy doing I was in a great job earning like six figure salaries and stuff like that. But the point is I was not happy. I was like, I need to change this. So yeah. I, vi I visualized my perfect day and the universe delivered it to delivered me it. A few yeah. months later. And that, that's, that's a real power to get into. Well, I, and I, I, I agree. I think it really is. And it's a great way to, to live your life. Like you say, on purpose and, 
to fulfill, make you feel fulfilled so that you can fulfill others as well. You can only give what you've got. So if you fill yourself up, then you can give that to someone else. Yes, absolutely. And um, what message of hope can you give to our audience for this year, for 2021? Yeah, never give in. Uh, never give in, you know, persistence is key. Uh, but one of the things I would say is decision. I would say decision is is so important because so many people can procrastinate. Uh, you know, they don't take action. They go, well, I'd like to do that, but, you know, um, maybe I'm safe in this job. or You know, I don't like it, but I'll do it until I'm, you know, retired. I mean, one of the great quotes I love is that many people, I think this is from Earl Nightingale, many people are tiptoeing through life, hoping to get safely to death. <laughs> and it's like, but it's true though isn't it yeah it a lot. yeah because it's it's i'm gonna i'm gonna make do yeah. because i can't see that there's another way that's right. and that and that's the hard part isn't it and i was yeah. fortunate enough you know i mean i look back at it now and you know a lot of multi-millionaires were bankrupt in their 30s and for me i look at it and i go okay I, i'm quite great well not quite i'm very 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 grateful for all of those experiences because i can put them into life remix and i can share that with the world and go look i was young cool and hip and i was a ministry of sound dj and all this stuff um and i was living the dream life of a young man and everything else but actually there was a lot of underlying problems in there and then they came true my biggest fears came true disease bankruptcy those are two big things that came up you know true for me yeah. but once you face them they they, they go away uh, and so I what I would say is, is that, you know, the message for hope for everyone is that, you know, work on yourself, invest in yourself. I've invested thousands in me uh, because I know that that's the best investment I could possibly make because I, then I improve myself and then I can help other people. And so, you know, I would say there is hope, uh, you know, look for the opportunity in, in the crisis um, and then keep going and keep growing. Amazing. That, that's such a great message. And um, so... We're going to share the links of, of Live Remix book, obviously how people can access it, all the, the um, access to your YouTube channel so people can um, take a look at what you do and, and how you do it so well. Um, but what's next for you, Mark? There's going to be, new, the, I'm sure there's going to be lots more that, that you're going to do. What, you know, what's your aspirations for the year, so the year and beyond that? Someone, someone said to me that when you release your book, you're 5% done. Uh, it was Peggy, Peggy McColl said that to me. You're, when, you, when you release your book, you're 5% done. I was like, 5% done? I've just been <laughs> slogging my guts out. You know, I've, I've written the whole thing. I've put it out and she said, yeah, you're 5% done. You've got 95% more to go. I was like, okay. Right, okay, <laughs> get ready. And so, uh, but I quite liked it because it gave me another boost and another motivator. And, and so, you know, Life Remixed is like, almost like, you know, it's like my business card now. It's something that that is part of my life because yeah. it is obviously partially my own story and then a lot of strategies that everyone else can use. Yeah. Um, I think that, um, you know, part of the plan, the next part of the plan, I've started to do five days to remix your life events that are online. Great. Uh, I'm coaching people worldwide, like I said. Uh, and one of the things I'm looking to do is to reconnect with my old Ministry of Sound uh, buddies. Uh, and uh, they've got a, 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 a big not just the nightclub they've got an event space so i'm looking to do some like live events there for say 100 people to start Amazing. with and people can come in and just listen to the stories and understand a bit more and hopefully learn more about themselves and everything else and then yeah. after that then obviously if they want more time with me and more coaching with me then of course that's something that i'm happy to share so so that's a big part of it there will be more books this one took me 10 years the next one will be quicker um <laughs> and uh, and the other stuff is you know the, the stuff I spoke to you about, the perfect day, yes. that actually uh, transcribes also into the perfect year. Yeah. And the perfect year for myself and, and Emma is not to be here in the cold, dark winter months, to be honest. Um, and I'm with you, I'm with you. My husband is not a fan of winter at all. <laughs> He's, he really struggles with it, to Isn't be that, honest. Him yeah. and I will get on just fine. Um, <laughs> but, uh, what I would say is, is that I don't love the winter. And, and one of the things is uh, that the freedom part of, of our lives is that, um, you know, we're working towards three months where we can be in Dubai or, or Thailand or Singapore yeah. or other places that we like that are warmer yeah. um, and still enjoy our lives and still have everything functioning perfectly well for whatever we are, wherever we are. Um, and that's something that will come to fruition in the next few years as we continue this this journey of growth it's momentum so. yes yeah. well i wish you every success with it and you know it's been fascinating talking to you and i'm sure the audience will be so intrigued so yes 
live remix we will be sharing all the links thank you so much been a great guest mark and um really wish, you, wish you a really really successful year and the same for you joe i really appreciate it thank you Thanks. bye Thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time to chat with me today. Really, really inspired by your whole persona, you know, what you've been through, how you've remixed your life and how you're also helping others to do the same. So wish you every success with your future endeavours. We will be sharing links on how you can get life remixed but also all of Mark's social handles too. So please do feel free to reach out to him directly and connect with him. If you're enjoying the Sheer Business Inspiration podcast and vlog, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, but we are on social media channels too. So connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. We'd love to hear from you all and to hear if you've got any feedback on the shows or episodes we've done so far and any people you'd love us to reach out to speak with in the future. So do connect with us. Our next guest is really, really inspiring, Josh Quigley, who is not just any old cyclist, he is an athlete. He has survived suicide attempts, he's also survived you know, life-threatening incidents, he has took on challenges of cycling around the world and set new world records. So. I'm sure you are going to love the next episode. So episode four will be Josh Quigley and you know the, there's a lot to cover in, in that time. So I hope you're enjoying and thanks for listening.